Hey guys, Brandon here with IFAST University. I want to welcome you to a three-part series on Olympic weightlifting. Um, with the advent of CrossFit and all the social media that's going on, we see a, more clients than ever walk through the doors that want to get into Olympic weightlifting or they're doing it in their weight room at high school or college. Right, so our three populations that we're really concerned about are high school and college athletes, because right, their coaches typically associate Olympic weightlifting with power development. Whether that's true or not, that could be a whole other video. Um, but they're going to have to do it at some point in their weight room. So we want to make sure that they can do um, some of the things very safely and effectively so that we're preventing injury during their season or their time at school. And then third, again, with all the social media, we have more general pop clients that are wanting to get into Olympic lifting. They see them, they look really impressive. Hey, I want to do that in the gym, right? So we want to make sure the same thing with those clients, that they can hit the same position safely and effectively to prevent injury while they're in here. Right, in our three-part Olympic lifting series here, we're going to first look at do our clients qualify to get into the lifts. Right, so we're going to look at can they get overhead safely and effectively. We'll talk about how to assess that and possible correctives for that. Can they squat effectively? Possible correctives for that. And then also can they deadlift? Right, Because the squat and the deadlift are going to end up being very big components of the lifts when we look at them as a whole. Second video we're going to get into is teaching the lifts to somebody new. Can they hit certain positions every time they're going through the movement? Um, how do we teach the lifts from the top down to get them into these positions safely and effectively? And then our third video, we'll look at the jerk and kind of add everything together and get into the whole lifts. All right, so our first prerequisite we're going to look at is can our athlete get overhead, right? So Christy's going to help us out throughout these videos in this video series. Um, she's an Olympic weightlifter at LSU right now. So all this should go pretty well, so we may have to pretend a little bit as we're going through things here. Um, first test we're going to do, I'm going to have Christy lay down. Yep, she's going to have her knees up, feet on the table, just like that. And we're going to check passive uh, shoulder flexion. Okay, so I'm going to have Christy take a long breath out through her mouth. She's going to kind of follow her ribs down here, make sure they're not popping up. Hold the ribs down, and we're going to see, can we get her arm overhead? And as we would kind of expect with her, not an issue. I'm not, her ribs aren't pushing into me a whole lot. I'm not really holding them down. Um, she gets to 180 there, right? So we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll have her take a long breath out. Follow the ribs down, just to make sure they're not pushing into my hand very hard as we take this arm overhead. And same thing, as we would expect on her, ribs aren't really pushing into me, arm gets all the way overhead. Okay, next thing, I just wanna see if she can do that actively. So I'm gonna have her take a long breath out. I'm gonna feel under her lumbar spine here. She's gonna put some pressure into my fingers. Now, if she holds that pressure on my hand, she's gonna see if she can take her arms overhead by herself. Right, still got pressure on my fingers, she's not arching her back, going into any extension here, and arms still get overhead, as we would kind of expect with her. All right, and our last quick assessment that we're going to do to get overhead, I'm going to have Christy stand up right here if you don't mind. You can face right towards the sign on the wall. Yep. We're going to have her take a long breath out. Christy, if you can, as you're breathing out, tuck your hips under you. Yep, so we got a nice flat lumbar spine here. And if she can hold on to that, abs should be engaged. Can we get her arms overhead that way? Go ahead and try and get arms overhead. All right, and as we would expect, she gets all the way overhead there, okay? Um, two things you'll see if people aren't able to get overhead, and we'll have Christy fake this a little bit for us. Uh, as they breathe out, go ahead and take one more breath out, Christy. And they take their arms overhead. If they just can't hold that position, we'll start to see their back arch right here. Go ahead and fake it, yep. Hips will go forward, back will arch. Their arms are overhead, quote unquote but we lost our spine and hip position there. Yep. And then other one is they do hold onto the position and arms just don't get overhead, right? So right there, she would be a little limited in that test. Okay, so next we're gonna get into some correctives. Uh, if our athlete can't get overhead, what we might do for that person. Okay, we're gonna start with a really passive exercise if we had somebody with limited shoulder flexion. Um, so we're gonna start with something called a lat hang. So Christy's gonna grab onto the bar overhead. She's gonna put a ball between her knees Right, her feet are about hip width apart. She's squeezing on the ball a little bit. She doesn't have to crush it. Nice passive hang here. Um, she's going to take a long breath out. Feet are staying flat on the box. And as she took that breath out, we saw her hips tilt a little bit. So you can even see her belt line is kind of tilted backwards now. She's going to hold on to the abs that she just got while she's breathing out. Go ahead and take a small breath in, Christy. And blow it all out again. Blow, 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 blow. Nice, hold on to that. And as she breathes in, we should see this expand just a little bit. There we go. You can, hopefully you guys can see that on the camera. And one more time. 
All right, so we're getting her overhead really passively though. She's not having to resist a bunch here. Um, we're just starting to engage the abs with the arms overhead in a position that should be fairly successful for just about anybody. And beautiful, thank you. All right, our first corrective, if Christy wasn't able to get overhead, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a kettlebell pullover. Okay, so we're gonna bring Christy's knees up, feet off. Yep, we're gonna make sure that her knees stay pretty close together. We may even throw a ball in there. And we're gonna have her reach the kettlebell up, make her arms as long as possible. She's gonna take a long breath out. Again, I'm kind of feeling under her lumbar spine here. She's got good pressure on the table. And then we're just gonna take the kettlebell back slowly. If I feel her back lift up, I would have her pause. Take another breath out, see if we can get her back on my hand a little more. She's still good. Take the kettlebell back even further. She's still got pressure on me. Go ahead and take a breath in. Long breath out. There we go. All right, so she's overhead now. She's got good pressure on my hand with her lumbar spine, so she's not going into any crazy extension, and she's getting safely overhead there. Okay, the reason we like to keep, you can go ahead and relax, Christy, thank you. Um, I like to keep the kettlebell or the dumbbell, whatever you're using, pretty light on these. Uh, if we go too heavy, her back's gonna start to come off the table when she gets to about 45 degrees or maybe 70 degrees or whatever it may be. Um, so we keep these fairly light just to make sure we can get that person into the position. We may even do it with just her hands without the kettlebell to start. Our second corrective that we're gonna use to start to get our athlete overhead if we have some limitation there, uh, is called the quadruped walkout. You guys may have seen this in some of our other videos, but we're gonna have Christy start on her hands and knees on the table. Christy, go ahead and relax your head down just a little bit. Uh-huh. We're gonna have our arms reach nice and long, so we're getting that thoracic spine uh, up towards the ceiling. Christy, go ahead and take a long breath out and tuck your tail between your legs just a little bit. You should see your pelvis tip back barely. Beautiful. So now I can ask her, Christy, do your abs feel on on the outsides here? She confirms and I can kind of feel that they're pretty tight over there. So we're gonna make sure that she holds onto this position that we just set up. We're gonna slowly walk our hands out. Yep, trying to hold on to that position. If we saw her lose any position anywhere, I would just have her stop. Go ahead and pause right there. Still looks pretty good. We'd have her reach a little more here. Take another breath out if she can. You still feel abs, Christy, on the outside. Beautiful. Then we can take her hands out even further. Yep, and right there, just because the table's going to run out. Go ahead and relax your head down a little bit. Beautiful. Still got a good curve here. Uh, lumbar spine's pretty flat. Go ahead and take a few breaths in and out, Christy. Blow, blow, blow. All right, so we're really challenging the core muscles here to hold on to this position, as well as to start to take the arms overhead. All right, so very similar to what we just saw with the kettlebell pullover. Um, this is gonna be a little more challenging because they're starting to control their body weight rather than just the kettlebell overhead. And one more breath there, Christy. And beautiful, go ahead and relax. All right, the first few corrective exercises that we looked at to get overhead, um, we weren't moving the arms around at all, right? We were just in a static position either with the kettlebell or hanging from the, the bar with the lat hang, <clears throat> um, or hands are staying stable in the, the quadruped walkout for the most part, right? So we're gonna start to add in some movement um, that looks like it's going overhead. We're not gonna get fully overhead yet with the landmine press, but we're starting to work our way there now. So we got Christy set up in our half kneeling position. Um, we'll get her to the bar. Whoop. We're gonna have Christy move a little closer. Things are moving on us, there we go. Yep, so once she's in this half kneeling position, we're gonna check a few things, just like the positions we were worried about before. So we're gonna have Christy take a nice long breath out. <sighs> Trying to tuck the hips a little bit. Abs look engaged here. We got a nice line basically all the way down. Back looks good. Once we're there, she's gonna hold onto that position. Christy, go ahead and press overhead. Beautiful. All right, so now we're starting to add in some movement. Um, with a good hip and spine position that starts to look like it's getting overhead here. And let's go ahead and do one more, Christy. All right, she's able to hold everything together and we're starting to add in movement. And again, we're not to a full 180, we're at 145, 160-ish of shoulder flexion, but we're working our way there now. All right, go ahead and relax, thank you. All right, the last corrective we're gonna look at to start getting overhead, is just gonna be a standing landmine press. We're gonna keep the feet together um, we're going to have Christy go ahead and grab the bar for us. Yep, and same thing we looked at in the half kneeling. We're looking for that same hip and spine position we've been talking about. So we'll have her take a nice long breath out. Christy, spread your feet apart just a little bit. Yep. So feet are about hip to shoulder width. Got a good, nice position here. Go ahead and lean forward just barely. Yep, right there. 
going to make sure she can hold everything together and start to add in movement. Go ahead, press Christy. Yep, so we're getting a little closer to actually overhead than we saw on our half kneeling landmine press. She's holding everything together beautifully there. All right, again, trying to challenge this position that she's in. Just stay in that position while we're starting to press overhead. Last one there. And beautiful. So we're going to pretend that Christy can't squat. Um, we're going to go through our corrective squat progression that we would use with just about anybody that walks in the door. Okay, so Christy's got the T-bar row handle hooked up to the cable machine here with a fairly light weight on here. So nothing that's going to crank her forward um, or nothing that she has to really pull on to sit down into her squat. So we're going to set up uh, feet about shoulder width apart. We're going to put an emphasis on the foot right in the middle, right? So not too much on the toes, not too much on the heel. We're going to have her take a long breath out. She's going to slowly tuck the hips just like we saw in the overhead portion. Yep. And as she squats down, she's going to let her shoulder blades come around her. The weight's just kind of pulling her shoulders around her. Yep. And she can hang out down there, take another breath out, blow, blow, blow. And just like in the lat hang, we should see when she breathes in this posterior area here, the rib cage, start to expand. Yep. And she can hang out there and take a few breaths um, or go ahead and come back up, Christy. So that's one way to do it. Our second way is I may just have her breathe out, squat down, hold on to the position and come back up. Yep. This one's a little more active. She goes down, go ahead and take a breath in and she can come back up there as well. All right. So same thing as the lat hang, fairly passive. Shoulders are coming around. Um, we're trying to hold on to rib and spine position and let her start to move a little bit. All right, our second corrective for the squat is going to be a reaching plate squat. So it's going to be very similar to what we just saw with the cable machine. Um, Christy just got a 10 pound bumper plate in her hand. It's going to be the exact same motion. Again, we can have her hang out at the bottom and take some breaths, um, or we can make it a little more active, reset at the top and go up and down. So we're going to have Christy start with the plate right next to her chest. Yep, again, feet are about hip or shoulder width. We're going to emphasize the middle of the foot front to back. Remember, taking a long breath out, she's going to tuck the hips, ribs should come down. So we're getting her to start in a good position here. Yep. And then as she squats down, she's just going to slowly reach the plate out right there. We can have her hang out there, take a breath in and out, blow, blow, blow. Again, as she breathes in, we're looking for the shoulder blades to come around her. This posterior area of the rib cage up here to fill up. Beautiful. And then as she stands up, I want her to hold on to that position and she can bring the weight back into her as well. Go ahead and stand up, Christy. Yep. And then again, a little more active, just like with the cable squat. You can have her get into a good position, squat down. She's still reaching out, take a breath in. And she can stand back up from there. Beautiful. Okay, our third exercise in our squat progression to kind of fix anything that we may have seen wrong um, is going to be a goblet squat. Right. Hopefully everybody's somewhat familiar with this. It's a little bit harder than a reaching squats, just, as, just because she doesn't have anything to counterbalance her now. Right. So we'll have Christy go ahead and grab our kettlebell here. Yep, she's got it in her goblet position. Remember, take a long breath out. Again, trying to tuck the hips. Ribs should come down to start. Beautiful. She's going to hold on to that position and squat down. Yep. And she still has a pretty good position there. She's going to press her feet into the floor. Stand back up. Right, should be a little more challenging. Again, she doesn't have anything to counterbalance her since the weight's staying a little bit closer to her center of mass here. She's able to hold on to her position pretty well. Feet stay flat. Everything looks good to go. All right, our final squat pro progression, we're going to get into a front squat, right? She's going to have to get into this position uh, if we start doing cleans. So we want to make sure that she's starting with her elbows fairly high when she addresses the bar, right? So she should have the bar resting across her shoulder. She's not really holding on to it anymore with her hands, okay? We're gonna do the same setup here. She's gonna take a small breath out. Once she feels her abs engaged, I want her to hold on to that position, take a small breath in, start to stabilize the spine, which we've talked about before. She's gonna hold on to that, squat down. Again, elbows should stay high. We'll see a lot of people, well, their elbows will drop down. Can you go ahead and demonstrate that, Christy? Yep, and now she's really gonna have to muscle the bar with her arms to hold on to it. So she stays in that good position there, and she go ahead and stand back up. Let's go through a couple more here. Get another good breath out. Hips come under, ribs get tucked back, takes a small breath in to stabilize the spine. Be able to sit basically straight down. One more for the camera. And beautiful. 
Okay, so we've safely gotten Christy overhead should she have needed it. We've also watched her squat and gone through our squat progression. Next thing we're gonna get into is our RDL and our deadlift patterning, right? There's gonna be a huge, huge part when she starts pulling from the floor or if we start doing anything um, with the barbell that looks like an Olympic lift in the next video. Okay, so the way I like to teach the RDL or the position at least um, is with the bench. So I'm gonna have Christy come close to the bench, maybe two or three inches away from it. Again, feet are flat on the floor, emphasizing the middle of the foot, not too far, not too uh, far forward or far back on the foot. We're gonna have her unlock her knees, just kind of have soft knees, yep. And then she's gonna bow over at the waist and try and get her hands flat on the bench here. And just like that, looks good. Go ahead and come back up. Let's do one more good one. And back's nice and flat here, nothing crazy is going on. Um, and then the two kind of biggest mistakes we'll see, or at least I'll see when we're coaching somebody through this for the first time, is we'll have what I like to call a reacher. So as Christy goes down, shoulders will come forward and she'll get her hands on the bench because that's what I told her to do. Um, but we lost all of our good position here, right? And the other thing we'll commonly see is if they do get into a good position, so it looks good right there on the way up, rather than initiating the movement with the hips, she'll initiate it with her back and her shoulders and you'll see this big arch in her back as she starts to come up. Can you do one more of those for us, Christy? Right again, she starts lifting the shoulders without her hips moving. Um, one thing we're gonna see in the coming videos is we really want the hips to drive things. So let's do one more good one. So once she gets down there, I like to tell some of my clients act like we're kicking you in the butt here. That should make her hips come forward and that drives everything to stand up. Beautiful. All right, our next step after we have at least the movement pattern of the RDL down is we're gonna give Christy here a kettlebell. Um, I like to raise it up so that the top of the kettlebell is about at knee height. Um, so we only need one block. Christy's obviously not that tall. Uh, if we have taller people, we're gonna add in another block, maybe a pad, whatever we need to, to get the top of the kettlebell at their knee height. Okay, so we're gonna have Christy go through that same motion that we just saw on the bench. Yep, soft knees, she bows down, kettlebell's right between her legs. As you see, her hips really initiate the movement. Let's go ahead and go back down, Christy. Yep, go ahead and pause right there. Okay, the golden rule that I'm gonna bring up time and time again throughout these videos is anytime the weight or your hands are at the knees, hips should be back and the shins should be vertical. Again, the golden rule, anytime the weight or your hands are at the knee, the shins should be completely vertical. Um, if the shins are vertical, we got a good position when we start to address a barbell here. Um, that way the, bar, the knees aren't in the way of the barbell when we start to get to that point in the lifts. Let's go ahead and do a couple more here, Christy. Again, she's really initiating with the hips. She's not overarching her back or anything. Shins look vertical, great position and she's good to go on to the next part of the progression. So we finally got a barbell in Christy's hands here. Um, we're basically gonna do the same motion we just did with the kettlebell, but throwing the barbell in there instead. Okay, so she's gonna take a long breath out, get in a good starting position, and start to bow over. Again, making sure the weight is kind of even on the foot front to back. Stops at the knee. The hips are driving everything as she's coming up. Go ahead and do one more good one here, Christy. All right, good position, spine's nice and flat here or as flat as we would want it, weight's even on the feet, and the hips are driving everything to make her stand up. Okay, two things we'll commonly see done wrong is people will forget our golden rule of weightlifting, right? We talked about when the barbell is at the knee, the shin should be vertical, which she just did the last few reps. Okay, two ways people will mess that up, right? The knees will come forward, which Chris is gonna demonstrate for us. So it looks more of a squat than a deadlift. So if we do see that, we're gonna have Christy pause right there, and I'm just gonna move her, okay? If your clients are all right with them putting their, your hands on them or if you guys are comfortable with that, that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. So we're gonna bring Christy's knees back and her hips are gonna come up right there. Yep. Now for pause, make sure the weight's even on her feet front to back again. Kind of take note of that feeling and come back up. Yep. And the other thing we'll see is the exact opposite. The knees will go too far back. So they'll lock the knees out. Go ahead and lock them out even more, Christy. That's as far as they're going. We see her weight shift back onto her heels her toes are popping up a little bit. Same thing, we're gonna move her, right? So we're gonna bend the knees. Yep, again, remembering that golden rule. If you can remember that golden rule, things will start to go right very quickly. Let's do one more good one so they can see it. Bowing, 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 paused right there. Kneecap, shins are vertical, hips are driving everything. She's gonna go on to the next part. All right, our final progression in our deadlift correction here is we're gonna actually do a deadlift with the barbell. Um, again, it's gonna be a big part of our Olympic lifts when we start pulling from the floor. 
So I want to make sure that Christy can get into good positions here uh, before we start making things a little more hectic with the, the Olympic lifts and the explosiveness that goes along with those. Okay, so we're going to have Christy set up. She's a few inches off the bar there with her shins. Yep, go ahead and go down, Christy. Okay, and our golden rule, we're going to have Christy do a few normal reps here. Just go nice and slow, Christy. Yep, so spine position stays good. When she gets to the knee, she squats down, so hips and shoulders move together the whole time. All right, and then pause right there. Okay, so as I'm teaching somebody this, um, I'll actually have them pause at their knee on the way up and the way down. Again, our golden rule of weightlifting, the shin should be vertical when the barbell is at the knee. Okay, and if it's not, we gotta make a correction. Okay, so we can come all the way up, Christy. So we'll kind of start from the top down here. I'll have Christy bow over. She'll look the same as her RDL that we just saw. Shins are vertical, looks good. We'll have her sit down so her hips and her shoulders should go down together. Yep. And then I'm going to have her pause her knee on the way up again so we can check that shin position. Right there. Shins look pretty good there. We let her finish out top of the deadlift there. Let's do one more rep. Paused. My fault, Christy. There we go. And down. Last one. And just having her pause, we're checking that position every time, especially if this is somebody new to Olympic lifting or deadlifting. We've got to make sure that they can find and feel these positions. Again, so when things get hectic and explosive with our Olympic lifts, um, hopefully it takes less for them to fall apart and technique to go bad. Thank you, Christy. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the first part of our Olympic lifting series here um, of figuring out do your clients or athletes qualify to start getting into the lift, right? We gave you some correctives to use. Um, those are just some general, some of our favorites that we like to use, but feel free to get creative with them, add other stuff in if it's needed. All right, so we'll see you back here in a few weeks for part two, where we'll actually start coaching somebody in the lifts, um, getting them into the prop proper positions and starting to put everything together.